my brother definitely recognized beauty in human beings and scenery. He was, he was a filmer, absolutely. He enjoyed being behind the lens. And it's an adventure going through his old tapes because he didn't edit anything. <laughs> The hepatitis virus started affected my brother in the early 2000s. And I would say by 2005, it really was an impediment. He was diagnosed with HIV in 1992. And I made him a promise then that if you ever need me, I will be there. So we went back and forth throughout the years because, you know, brother, sister, you can only hang out with your brother for so long. <laughs> and then I believe I did speak to one of his doctors and the reception said, you know, Tony's missed three appointments. So yeah, it was time for me to come. So I went back to Maui and, and tightened up where I lived and gave notice. There was a bond between my brother and I, and I think it really cemented during our parents' divorce. And he was my protector during that stage of our lives. And then it kind of became, I was his protector. You know, my brother was smart enough to stop drinking as soon as he was diagnosed because he lived for many years with the virus because it took a little while till they came up with something that we felt would be okay as treatment. And then we lost our oldest brother to hep C that went to liver cancer and he entered the hospital and never came out. I really do believe that opened up Tony's mind because we had uh, talked about it before, but his, because of his co-infection status, he had to be careful. My brother took part of the research through Waikiki Health Center, precipitated by our angel, Lady Jane, who came from San Francisco with a grant from Kaiser to help the folks on Oahu who were co-infected. It was really kind of hard to see how it affected his health, his day-to-day -day quality of life. I would say six months after treatment, you know, I saw a new energy, a new spark, and we always wanted to travel. You know, we wanted to do a road trip, uh, you know, on the mainland. He said, we go, brother. It was a celebration of him having successful hepatitis C treatment. It really was. Within 30 days, he was showing no copies of the hepatitis C virus. Miracle, man, it's a miracle. <laughs> I just wish it would have stuck. I mean, his whole physicality would have stuck. My brother did not die from the hepatitis C virus. He contracted pancreatic cancer about two years later. The hard part of caring for someone that you know is not long for the world is bittersweet. You know, there's tears, there's laughter, there's sleepless nights. So he chose to uh, stop chemotherapy at that time. And I am the type of caregiver, it's your body, your choice. I will support whatever decision you made. It was hard, cried myself to sleep a lot of nights. Like why, you know, he received the, the treatment, you know, and then it just seems so unfair. You know, it really does. All the challenges he dealt with health-wise. But you know, he died very peacefully on his own terms at home. My brother, my brother, my brother. Oh my goodness, doing this video really makes me miss him. But you know, the longer the grief, the stronger the love. All you caregivers out there, it's really important to look after yourself because caregiving is tough. Man, it takes a lot of energy and love. And, and that's something Tony would remind me about. How can you take good care of someone else if you're not taking care of yourself? Yeah, we need to get together as a community because people need to be taken care of. And I think the more we strengthen the community of caregiving, the better job we will all do. It's bittersweet, but you know, I wouldn't change a thing. I'm glad that I was able to be there for my brother and make sure that he had a quality of life. And if that darn pancreatic cancer wouldn't have raised his ugly head, He'd probably be here talking to you right now. And in a way he is, you know, he's in me. He really is.